yesterday, where yesterday we talked about uh, flow assurance in uh, in oil and gas uh, surface facilities, surface connections, and different assets. Um, in today's uh, webinar, we will be talking about uh, oil and gas wells specifically, and uh, different types of uh, issues that might arise in oil and gas wells, and uh, how to model and how to um, um, uh, strategize uh, on different uh, solutions, depending on the problems we're having. So, uh, the agenda for the day is uh, we will be revisiting the system analysis or the classical approach for system analysis and it's uh, some of its drawbacks. Uh, plus, we will be taking a look at uh, different applications for uh, dynamic wellbore simulation or uh, softwares like Olga. And uh, we also will be uh, we will be taking a uh, slight look at uh, how different uh, reservoir representations is possible in current days uh, in dynamic simulation and how we are not just uh, limited to the IPR representation and uh, how this uh, type of uh, representation is solving different problems in, uh, in different uh, parts of the world. Plus, uh, towards the end of this uh, session, we will be talking about and uh, taking a look at different cases or different case studies uh, where uh, we will be utilizing uh, dynamic wellbore simulators like Olga uh, to address different flow assurance uh, that's happening inside oil and gas wells. So specifically, we will be uh, looking, taking a look at uh, three case studies. The first one is a well shut in and a startup. The second one is uh, well cleanups after after completion, and third of uh, the case studies is the sweet corrosion in gas wells. Plus, we will take a look at at the end of this uh, webinar. We will take a look at uh, what can you do with your dynamic simulator in uh, regards of digital oil field. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, start uh, today's uh, session. So uh, yesterday we took a look at the classical production modeling and different uh, shortcoming that it was imposing. And uh, yesterday we said that uh, one of the most severe limitations to this type of modeling is actually is the uh, there is no integration with time and there is no actual relation to the time in the, the governing equations. If we take a look at the classical or the historical background on these types of modeling, we see this type of modeling actually started uh, in 1954 uh, by a person, by an engineer called uh, W.E. Gilbert, uh, where he published a paper called uh, Flowing and uh, Gas Lift Well Performance. And uh, he published this paper in 1954 uh, in this paper, he introduced a lot of concepts that's uh, that's normal or they are standard in today's petroleum and production engineering. So uh, the first uh, of these concepts, the first of these concepts is actually is the IPR and the VLP uh, plotting at the same place where it's known as nodal analysis in these days. Uh, however, in his paper, he did not talk about uh, such a concept. However, he presented it in a graph and he showed how to drive uh, the optimum performance uh, uh, from the wells from these types of charts. Plus, he introduced uh, the uh, one of the first uh, chalk uh, multi-phase chalk models. Um, uh, to his uh, representation of this uh, chalk model is uh, widely used, still widely used today, uh, with different uh, coefficients. Uh, to be more precise, however, the same equation uh, still lives today. And uh, uh, Gilbert uh, has pioneered uh, last century's production engineering and uh, different studies for oil and gas uh, wells. Uh, however, as we uh, said yesterday, as computers has evolved, uh, plus the challenges from uh, different parts uh, in the world has arised, especially in the oil fields that are remote and they are uh, in harsh environments. Uh, the need for a more sophisticated and more complex tool has arised. So basically what uh, Gilbert has uh, pioneered is the classical system analysis, which was represented by uh, a nodal analysis. 
where an intersection between the inflow and the outflow uh, exists, and this intersection provided the Q and the P. So basically, this is uh, the standardized way where most petroleum engineers and most production uh, specialists are uh, using in order to determine different parameters for a flowing well and different uh, bottlenecks and different problems. I am not suggesting that you should um, abandon this uh, method. Uh, I am just um, implying that there are other ways that you can implement along with this way in order to drive more insights and more values from our uh, modelings. So basically, this is uh, this was the era of uh, nodal analysis. And uh, in the time being, in the current time now, it's the era of dynamic production modeling. Uh, dynamic production modeling uh, uh, is, uh, is a type or approach of uh, production system modeling like uh, wells and surface facilities where we use uh, these complex and complicated uh, software tools like uh, Olga and uh, uh, another software called Lidaflow. And uh, there's an, another version, uh, or sorry, there is another software called uh, Gap. Uh, transient gap transient is a uh, is a sub package in a gap software that's provided by petroleum experts and however that's the feature in the of the transient simulation is, is, is still new and it's not mature yet however the uh, the most advanced software in the market is uh, olga and uh, the case studies we will take a look at is in olga format so if we take uh, a close look at uh, different benefits that we can drive or different modeling approaches and different uh, uh, things that we can uh, drive from analyzing uh, or creating uh, Olga uh, models or dynamic uh, wellbore models is uh, one of the most important things that I usually study is the startup and the shutting of oil and gas wells. Uh, this becomes very uh, critical whenever you have uh, a uh, a production uh, uh, whenever you have like uh, a rule restriction on the production uh, when you start uh, shutting in uh, some wells to uh, to uh, decrease the production and uh, whenever the operators come to uh, to decide which well he wants to shut in there are specific criteria that you usually he tries to follow. Uh, however, if you have uh, some knowledge and some experience in softwares like uh, Olga or Lidaflow or any actually any uh, software that provides dynamic modeling, you will you can drive very valuable insights from such modeling because uh, these types of models can tell you whether your well will start flowing after you shut it or not. So uh, if you select, for example, if you select a well for um, for shutting and then the well did not start up naturally on its own, uh, now you will need a method of intervention or like a method to bring the well alive, which is usually going to be a cold tubing unit. And uh, by the way, you can use Olga to plan all of this and uh, to mitigate this if it's possible. Uh, one of one of the most important uses of uh, using uh, dynamic simulators or using Olga is actually is bean size optimization, or it's known as uh, bean up and bean down strategies. Because um, bean up and bean down strategies um, or the size of the chuck is actually it's not uh, like uh, uh, it's not like a variable of its own. It's dependent on a lot of uh, variables in the oil and gas uh, field, for example one of the most important variables or one of the most important parameters that bean size optimization is uh, based on is actually based on the reservoir pressure itself. So uh, the change or the change of the reservoir pressure with time actually will um, will help you to determine what's the best bean up and bean down strategies during the different uh, uh, life of the well and when do you achieve that uh, time-wise. Uh, plus, uh, if you are working with artificial lift, you can use uh, Olga to design and evaluate uh, different scenarios in the artificial lift. And uh, if you're working with uh, gas wells, you can use uh, softwares uh, that can do dynamic uh, simulation to uh, do uh, liquid loading analysis, especially in the 
uh, wells that are producing some sort of uh, condensate or some sort of uh, H2O. So you can do that as well. And uh, you can evaluate uh, different strategies. One of the most important things I have used Olga before for is the well cleanup. So well cleanups actually is uh, is one of the case studies we will take a look at where we uh, actually we minimize the time to bring the well online using the cold tubing unit. Uh, the most modern uh, strategy or the most modern uh, studies actually they integrate the reservoir and the production modeling where we use uh, numerical reservoir simulators for the near well only, not the full field, please note that and uh, to drive uh, different uh, aspects and different uh, transients that are usually happening uh, during the production. And uh, typically IPRs or the inflow performance or the like simplified equations like productivity index or Vogel's uh, equation does not provide any uh, value in that area. So you have to uh, use uh, numerical reservoir simulation in, uh, in conjunction with all the models. And we will be taking a look at this as well. Uh, you can do corrosion modeling in wells and uh, with different mitigation strategies. You can monitor cross flow. Cross flow is one of the hardest phenomena to uh, model. However, you can use uh, Olga and LidaFlow or uh, similar softwares to uh, to model uh, these types of uh, phenomena. A cross flow is actually is uh, flow between layers uh, during shutting and during the uh, flow. So uh, you have uh, multiple situations that can create cross flow. Uh, plus, uh, last but not least, uh, you can create uh, deposition uh, uh, studies uh, with these types of models, uh, wax and sand, and you can, uh, of course, you can create asphaltine uh, deposition models as well. However, those tends to be more challenging to create. And uh, one of the most important things or one of the most important uh, features of using uh, dynamic wellbore simulators like Olga is actually is the capability to replace the inflow performance or the IPR relationship with actual full uh, full uh, numerical simulation models. Uh, these types of models, once connected to the wellbore, will create a fully transient uh, production system where the transient effect starts from the reservoir and then it transferred to the surface facilities. So um, in this manner, we can monitor all the uh, different uh, uh, phenomena and different uh, effects that are happening on the production system. Uh, you can uh, model these types of uh, reservoirs uh, for different kinds of wells. For example, you can do it for vertical wells, directional and horizontal wells. So uh, if you are trying to see how the saturation is uh, changing with time, uh, during the production near the well wall, you can use a numerical simulation for that. And uh, changing different uh, bin up strategies uh, can uh, surely affect the different saturation changes or different uh, fluid distribution near the well bore. Uh, so you can um, utilize this to drive uh, some uh, valuable decisions. So we will be taking a look at uh, uh, three cases studies. Uh, actually, it's not two, it's three case studies. So the first case study we will be taking a look at is actually well shutting and startup. The second case study is going to be uh, well cleanup after the completion. And the third case study is going to be uh, corrosion modeling in gas well. So uh, if we take a look at uh, a shutting process, uh, the, the process of shutting our well is actually is uh, a status of converting a well from a producer well or an injector well to a well that's not uh, producing or not injecting. So everything in that well will stop. Uh, for example, uh, the production will start to, uh, uh, which will be converted from a specific value to zero and the injection as well. Uh, however, this model uh, or this uh, situation is very complex to model because there are a lot of, uh, inputs and there are a lot of uh, things that can happen during a shutting. Um, one of the considerations for the shutting is the uh, the production turndowns. Uh, uh, other cases for shutting actually is uh, to collect a reservoir survey, reservoir pressure surveys. And uh, 
uh, plus uh, some other shutting uh, strategies are uh, for uh, near well bore uh, reservoir pressure recharge. So these are just uh, simple usages. And uh, in some wells where uh, water conning or water breakthrough is a problem, uh, the wells are usually shut in for a specific time uh, to let the water cone uh, calm down a little bit and then start uh, to produce again. So uh, what's actually, what's the, the big deal about well shutting? Why it's so important? Uh, the well shutting actually is uh, a campaign with a very uncertainty during the startup. So once you have this uncertainty during the startup, meaning that more cost is going to be involved in the process of starting up a well. For example, uh, let's assume that you have a field um, and this field contains like 500 wells or something. I know in uh, in the United States, in the United States, there are uh, some fields that contains tens of thousands of wells, and some other fields like in Europe or something, uh, or Middle East, there are like 500 or 600 wells in a specific uh, field. Uh, let's assume that uh, from these uh, 500 wells, may you want to select like 10 wells to shut in. So. Uh, the candidate that you want to shut in the well should be a well that can start up uh, naturally again with less cost. Uh, however, you cannot, by, by using the uh, classical tools, you cannot select a well that, can, uh, you, that you can make sure it can start uh, flowing again. So uh, in this area comes softwares like Olga, uh, that will help you to determine which well can start up uh, on its uh, natural power or its natural energy. So, uh, so uh, the uh, the most important thing in startups is uh, just the uncertainty. We don't know if the well will start or not. So, uh, if you go ahead and create like models in uh, Olga for the startup and the shutting process. By the way, the startup and shutting uh, process are usually modeled uh, at the same time because whenever you shut in a well and then you will try to start it up. So these two processes are usually modeled at the same time. So if we take a look at the issues or the phenomena that is governing the, uh, the shutting process, we will see that uh, whenever there is a production, the uh, the different phases of oil and gas and water are commingled and they are mixed in a certain way uh, along the well path and they are just producing naturally. So what happens whenever you shut in the well from the top, actually the different phases or the different uh, uh, fluids or the different, uh, this different mixture starts to segregate or meaning that it starts to separate from each another. And each phase uh, will start to create like a section of its own in the well bore. And the length and the depth of this uh, section will solely depend on the different parameters in the reservoir plus the fluid properties. Uh, Olga will uh, help us into determining uh, what happens in the well during the shutting process. Plus, um, if you are having like high water cut uh, production, uh, there is a high chance there will be a water lag or like a high water lag in the well. And uh, this water lag can be ranging like from uh, a few meters up to thousands of meters, depending on the depth of the well. And the more the water you have, the, the harder the, uh, the startup procedure. Plus, uh, using these types of models, you can determine what is the optimum time to shut in the well and when is the optimum time to, to uh, start the well again uh, without being too late. So, uh, so what's uh, or what are the, uh, the value that we drive from these types of models? So the first thing is actually we can optimize the shutting and the startup procedure. So this is the first and most important thing. We can we can monitor the reinjection of fluids. Uh, reinjection of fluids is actually whenever you're shutting the well and the well head pressure starts to rise, um, there is a piston-like action that occurs inside the wells, inside a shutting wells, and it will drive some of the fluid back to the formation. So this is known as the fluid reinjection. So in order to know which fluid is being precisely injected at at what rate and which time exactly. Olga will help you to determine that as well. 
if you are having like static gradient surveys that you took uh, using slick line units, uh, whenever the well was shut in, you can use that as well to match all your models. So this will be very helpful and very beneficial to match. Plus you need some well head pressure and well head temperature to match. And plus uh, you can calculate, once you match all of these, you can calculate the optimum time to keep the well shut in before it's too late to start up. Uh, you can see uh, some wells actually, the longer they are shut in, the better the chance uh, they will start up. For other wells, uh, it's the opposite. Uh, the longer they are shut in, uh, the the more the chance they have that that the well not will not start on its own. So you can you can have like both cases. Usually, what we try to monitor is like different variables and and uh, different aspects of the operational parameters. For example, you can monitor the bottom hole pressure. You can monitor uh, the well head pressure as we are doing in uh, this uh, slide. So once you monitor all of this, you can uh, you can evaluate uh, the different uh, aspects of the operation itself. So uh, in this uh, bottom chart, actually what we are trying to monitor is actually is uh, the length or the height of the water, where the water is sitting exactly. Uh, for example, uh, this chart contains uh, three curves. Each curve is actually is the length of the water um, during a specific time uh, during shutting. For example, the blue line is actually uh, the water uh, level or the water holdup after two hours. Uh, the orange line is uh, actually is the holdup or the water uh, uh, depth after uh, 10 hours into shutting. And you can see uh, after 24 hours, the water has regressed so much and has, has entered the formation. So now uh, the depth of water is now is almost uh, 3,000, whereas in the initial state, the depth of water was 1,000. So you can see uh, different operational environments um, or different uh, operational aspects of uh, these types of cases. Now, once we're shutting the well and monitor different uh, parameters, now it's the time to uh, start up the well. So once you start up the well, you can see different transient effects that are happening in the well. For example, not all the wells will start to flow initially. So some wells will require some assistance to start to flow, which is usually going to be the nitrogen lift from the cold tubing units. And some wells can start uh, normally. However, there is a mismanagement for the bean sizes. For example, if you start the well on the uh, wrong bean size, you can uh, have the risk of the uh, gas escaping out and the well not flowing uh, 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 properly. And then the well shut in itself and then the well, the production ceases. So you have to know exactly um, which bean size you should use. And using Olga, you can determine this easily. Plus, uh, you can determine the initial flowing rates for the uh, different flow rates like uh, oil and gas and water, plus where the stabilization rate uh, when these uh, flow rates will start to stabilize. And then you can detect any bottom hole pressure built up during the startup process because uh, the process of starting up a well is actually is a process of um, unloading the liquids from the well. So unloading the liquids, meaning that lifting up or alleviating some of the bottom hole pressures. So whenever you have a bottom hole pressure building up during the startup, meaning that there is something going wrong with the well itself, the bottom hole pressure should go down, not up. So we can monitor that as well. We can schedule for the nitrogen lift. We can optimize different parameters for nitrogen lift, like the injection pressure, injecting depth, and the time for injection, like how many time, how many hours we need to inject. For example, if a well can flow on its own after two hours of injection, there is no need to keep the, the nitrogen uh, uh, lifting or the nitrogen kick unit for like 10 hours on the site. So using Olga, we can optimize these uh, different uh, aspects. Plus, uh, one of the most uh, 
mistreatments for the wells and the production facilities is actually is circulating out the nitrogen to the production facilities. You can anticipate the search um, volumes or the search pressure in the separators so you can handle it uh, at, the, uh, at the best scenario as possible. So before we take a look at the shutting and startup in Olga, uh, there is a paper I would like to recommend for you all to read whenever you have time. The paper is, I think, is 14 pages long or something similar to this. And uh, the paper actually, uh, the paper suggests uh, different use cases and uh, different uh, scenarios uh, for uh, for using utilizing Olga. So this is the first paper. Another paper I would recommend to for you to read if you are interested in the shutting and the startup procedure is a paper that I have published uh, two years earlier uh, where I am uh, creating a model and I'm creating a strategy to start up a lazy well by direct gas injection at the wellhead where there is no packer is installed. So this is a 20 page long uh, paper you can go ahead and download from the SP website so you can see all the different scenarios that can go into uh, running a uh, shutting well successfully. So fire up Olga. And take a look at our startup and shutting procedure. So basically, Olga is uh, is a tool that's basically designed to be uh, general in use. You can have all of these components that are uh, that can be used for different things. For example, uh, valves can be installed on wells. It, the same valve can be installed um, for different types of uh, assets and facilities. Plus, all of these nodes are uh, are common among uh, different uh, assets in the oil and gas field when, whenever it's modeled in here. So let me just show you the well path. So this is basically the well path. The well is uh, 1,600 meters uh, deep. Plus, there you have some horizontal section that's uh, represented by this line, which uh, the chalk and the flow line is installed. So let's go ahead and uh, fire up the simulation. And we will wait until the simulation finishes. Uh, while the simulation goes ahead and finish, let me just uh, walk you through, through them, some of the key aspects of this model. For example, if you go ahead to the case definition and then go to integration, you can see this simulation is running for 40 hours. You can make this simulation as long as you want. And for example, uh, in order to view the key events that is happening during the simulation, you can go to this uh, to this uh, crescent wrench um, uh, icon, and then you can go ahead to timeline view. And timeline view will show you like different uh, things that are happening in the life of the simulation for example the simulation starts from the left at time zero and then ends at time 40. Uh, these uh, these uh, square uh, dots are are like the events that are happening for example you can have like a valve uh, size change or the bean size changing from a specific value to another so you can monitor all of this uh, as well so uh, let's see if the simulation is finishes. Simulation is done. Let's check uh, the status of the valve. So we can we can go to the time series and view the valve size itself. We can see the the well is let to produce for uh, uh, for one hour and then the well is shutting. Uh, the well is shutting for almost uh, 23 24 hours and then the well started up to uh, produce after 24 hours and then from 24 hours to 28 hours during this five uh, hour period a change in the chalk size is uh, is uh, is made so let's evaluate this startup procedure and the startup and shutting procedure to be more precise um, uh, we can uh, plot a lot of variables by the way Olga supports like hundreds of variables to plot However, the most important things to plot are the flow rates and the pressures themselves. So let's first of first thing, let's plot the 
the oil rate. And then let's plot the bottom hole pressure because the bottom hole pressure should go down, not up. And you can monitor the temperature as well in the bottom hole. This will give you an indication if you are having like proper uh, liquid unloading. So you can select all of these variables and click OK, and then view different uh, uh, parameters. For example, um, let's change the time from uh, seconds to hours and then view this uh, different production strategy. You can, by the way, turn off uh, all the variables that are not necessary to you. For example, I will only keep the production uh, variable. Uh, the production variable is the variable with the black line or the black color. You can see during the initial production, we had like 800 barrels per day of production. And uh, during the first hour, it's somewhat stable. Uh, however, whenever I shut in the well for 20 hours or 23 hours or something, and in this, uh, in this period, on the time uh, 24, we have decided to open up the well again for production. You can see there is an initial spike in production. However, the well, the well sorry, is not keeping up with the production and it's not keeping up with the well unloading. You can see the production is actually is flattening out at zero after just eight hours or sorry, after six hours of, uh, of starting up, meaning that this well has not started up properly. And you can see that by plotting different variables as well. For example, you can uh, uh, plot the bottom hole pressure. You can see the bottom hole pressure has not changed a lot, meaning that the well is not unloaded properly. Plus, you can view uh, different temperature. For example, uh, you can see some cool down effects and stuff like this on the wellhead. And you can do, by the way, you can do a lot of... Uh, Plotting, for example, you can do a profile plot for the uh, for the holdup and the liquid rates. For example, you can do this. And this will show you where the liquid is sitting after the shutting process. So you can see the liquid actually is only reaching like uh, below a thousand uh, uh, less than a thousand meter or sorry, like less than 500 meters from the top of the Christmas tree. And then uh, the fluid is not flowing anymore. So meaning that uh, using this strategy, uh, it's not successful. What we can do actually is we can uh, evaluate different uh, strategies for a startup. For example, if you have like a high uh, back pressure on the well, you can alleviate this a little bit and then you can evaluate the startup strategy. For example, the only original pressure is 250 and that can be a little bit too much for some wells to start up. For example, you can uh, reduce this pressure to 150. For example, you can swap the well to other uh, production facilities or other, other uh, low pressure separators. And then you can evaluate the startup again. And uh, once the simulation finished, we will try to plot everything. So we can evaluate different strategies. And uh, to be honest, uh, from the looks of it, uh, the well is, uh, is much more stable at the initial phase of the flow. And then the shutting commences. And then after the shutting, whenever we start a well, you can see the flow rate curve is uh, going up, meaning that this is a good sign. Plus the bottom hole pressure curve is going down, meaning that we have a proper unloading of the well. So uh, if you refresh everything, you can see the production has already stabilized uh, towards hour 26. So uh, these are different, uh, like this is the, like the simplest strategies you can do in order to have evaluate the startup and shut shutting procedures. Now let's move to the second case. Please, if you are, you are finding such case interesting, please just comment in the chat box. And the second case will be the well cleanups. Well cleanups actually happens after drilling or after re completion or after recompletion. And uh, these types of uh, cleanups are usually done using cold tubing units or uh, you like circulating lighter fluids like uh, the diesel fuel in uh, some of some of the parts of the world. Uh, however, you have like uh, three main strategies to clean up a well. And uh, the main strategy will involve actually injecting nitrogen into the wellbore. However, the time 
and the amount of nitrogen injected is uh, is actually needs to be optimized uh, very much because uh, nitrogen keeping the nitrogen unit is just cost by itself. So let's uh, take a look at what we are trying to model in these types of uh, of projects. So actually, we are modeling heavy drilling fluids that are sitting in the well. You can see like different sections of the drilling fluid on the left hand side. Olga can handle uh, three different fluid uh, drilling fluid types, which are uh, water-based, gas-based, and uh, uh, oil-based MUDs. And during the initial state, there is no gas in the world war because we need to control the formation. Otherwise, whenever you have like gas sitting in the well itself, we can have like uh, different uh, accidents in the well, like uh, uh, kick or the uh, blowout in the more severe cases. So what we are trying to model in these types of projects actually is the optimization of the nitrogen lift itself, like how many hours I need to inject, at what pressure, and at which depth. Do I need to circulate while I'm going down, or should I stabilize at specific point? All of these questions can be answered whenever you create Olga models for uh, cleanups. You can take a look at, or you can monitor different uh, displacement of water-based, oil-based MUDs. You can monitor the the start of the production procedure plus uh, how sustainable your production is once you cut uh, cut down the nitrogen injection, plus the stability of different parameters like bottom hole pressure, the Q oil and uh, the gas oil ratio and uh, all of these various things. So let's go ahead back to Olga software and take a look at the cleanup process. So for the cleanup process, actually we have uh, this well, and this well, we have this zone where the production is flowing from. And uh, we have in this well bore, we have a drilling fluid that's cleaning the well. And then in the M or the source, we are injecting nitrogen in order to evaluate different uh, uh, procedures for nitrogen uh, uh, lift and uh, its optimization. So, Let's try to uh, plot different variables. Uh, for example, you have the gas MUDs and uh, the water-based MUD. You can plot all of these like this. So you can monitor this as a MUD displacement during the uh, nitrogen injection. You can create like specific plot for this. Uh, <clears throat> however, the displacement plots are usually accompanied with uh, oil production plots. Uh, for example, you can add the, ga uh, the oil rate to this plot so you can see at which specific time the oil will start to flow from the well. Uh, you can see from the start of the injection, which is the time zero, up to the 2.5 hours, the oil uh, rate was uh, uh, somewhat coming. However, the, it was not stable. Uh, it was has it's it was having its own ups and downs. However, after two point hours, the injection has stabilized. Uh, by the way, from two point hours up to five hours, I don't want you to think that this is a stabilized production. This is a stable production because we are using nitrogen to lift up the well. So, what happens if we cut the nitrogen supply from the well? Do you see this uh, like this small? Uh, feature in the chart, this is where the nitrogen has stopped being injected. You can see the well is losing some of its production, something closer to like 60 barrels. However, you can see the production is very much stable. And you can create a lot of diagnostic plots with it. For example, you can go ahead and create a plot for the um, for the bottom hole pressure and the bottom hole temperature. So you can see the stabilization. You can see these uh, different parameters, like the pressure, temperature, and the, uh, the GR is pretty much stable after uh, the well uh, starts to flow on its own. So we can safely assume that the well only needs like five hours of unit uh, of nitrogen injection uh, before we shut in uh, the unit or uh, we mobilize the unit. So by, by the way, this is uh, just just a, uh, a simple preview of what you can do in the nitrogen optimization. 
And I have already a paper uh, published on how to optimize uh, nitrogen injection uh, for different uh, wells using Olga, of course. So the third case is actually is uh, the CO2 corrosion, or it's known as sweet corrosion in gas wells. So we have a specific gas well on the left-hand side. And uh, what we are trying to model actually is uh, the corrosion rate per year, plus the effect of different pressure and temperature configuration on the corrosion itself, plus the concentration, uh, the effect of the CO2 concentration on the, or the CO2 uh, content effects on the uh, the process of the corrosion itself, plus we can calculate the remaining wall thickness uh, once we have all of these data available. So let's go ahead and fire up the Olga model. You can see the Olga model for the corrosion is just uh, a, a same similar model to the cleanups. However, the corrosion model is uh, enabled in this well. Uh, once you enable the corrosion model, you can select which model you want to view. For example, Olga provides three models, model one, two, and three. Uh, one of the models actually is top of line corrosion and the, the remaining two is uh, bottom of line corrosion. So you can have like a full coverage of the pipeline. You can select different things to plot. For example, you can select the corrosion profile or the uh, remaining wall thickness profile uh, using the profile plot, by the way, I am running the simulation for 10 hours. You can select all of these corrosion models and you can select the unit as well. For example, uh, the unit is set to millimeter per year, which is uh, one of the best units for corrosion. And you can see initially there is no corrosion in the well because there is no flow existing. So yet, uh, however, when you change the slider, you can see like different corrosion actually occurring like during different uh, times uh, in, into the production. And once you have these different corrosion values, you can just uh, transfer this to like Excel and then calculate the remaining wall thickness. Um, plus, you can corrosion monitor like a specific locations in your well. For example, you can corrosion monitor the well head and the uh, bottom of the well or the sump where some liquid actually will uh, will be 100% in contact and it sits in the bottom of the well in the sump to be more precise. And for example, I am monitoring uh, the corrosion in this uh, in the bottom hole location. And I am like uh, plotting different variables like the corrosion rate plus the water holdup and the pressure itself. So you can have like... Uh, a look at different variable performance uh, during uh, different times in the performance of the well. For example, um, this plot actually shows you like a performance for this gas well for 10 days. And you can see like uh, different corrosion uh, happening in the well or in the bottom well. Uh, however, if you take a look at the later life or later time in the wells, uh, you can see um, the day 7.6 up to the uh, for like uh, four or five hours in this uh, production scenario, there is no corrosion uh, indicating at all because there is no liquid actually sitting in the well, meaning that this well is unloading properly. The blue line actually shows you the water holdup, which is the indication of well if the well is loading or unloading properly. So uh, that's it for uh, today. And uh, let's move uh, to our, uh, our slides. And uh, by the way, you can use Olga not just for offline modeling, you can use it for online modeling as well. For example, you can use it as a virtual production system or like use it like uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, monitoring uh, real time flow assurance using the internal models in Olga. And then you can just uh, spit out, or you can plug in those results coming from the transmitter or from the historian or the database, and then plug them into Olga using some programming interface. And then you can obtain all of these uh, flow assurance and uh, all of these important insights. So um, uh, towards the end of this uh, session, please, if you have any